How's it going everyone out there? My name is Jake James Lugo and welcome to my channel. So it's finally time that I get to check out something I've been wanting to look at for quite a while for you guys here on this channel. As many of you know, I have a very strong connection to the Sega Genesis because me and the Genesis practically have the same birthday. It's pretty much like months apart. So it was only natural that eventually I would get to checking out the Genesis Mini from Sega. This is the mini console based on the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, depending on what territory that you're in, uh, with a whole bunch of games that were big hits and big classics on the Genesis's live. Library. But we're gonna unbox this bad boy I'm gonna give you guys my full thoughts on my review and actually see is this worth picking up Especially if you're not really a big Genesis fan or if you're a hardcore Genesis fan and You don't already have a, a bunch of replica consoles. Is this something that you need to have in your collection? Okay, people so here is the Sega Genesis mini from Sega the 16-bit mini version of the console or again Just mini version of the 16-bit console. I should say a uh, very cool packaging a uh, very retro inspired You know very inspired by the classic box as someone that uh, grew up around the time when this was still a thing Especially as popular as it was for the 16-bit era of console gaming uh, This really takes me back again. They even got some of the official old Sega logos, you know, obviously the grid looking behind it uh, say, uh, Was it Sonic being on the package? Now, the one that I had personally was the Altered Beast release version, the one that came packed in with Altered Beast. This one is, I guess, is based more on uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, which came out a couple years later. Uh, but let's open up this bad boy. Let's see how it is inside. Take a look at the hardware, of course, and see what exactly it's like. Now, I did use this when I was at E3. Uh, when I actually went to E3 this year, I got to play it before the console came out. So here we go. I'm pulling out the controllers. Which seems pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff in here, as you guys can see. It's even got that like cardboard look to it on the inside. You got all the cables and everything. There's a bunch of different stuff, as you guys can tell. I think believe this is the console itself. Yep. Okay. So, uh, but let's open it up here. This is the console. Okay. Right, this is the right spot to open it, and here we go. And boom. There's our Genesis Mini, 16-bit high-definition graphics. All that good stuff that you want to have in your video games. <laughs> but there we go. Move this plastic here. Put it to the side. Move that there. I'm going to keep that for its box. But there you go. That's the Genesis Mini. It feels good. Very light. Feels very good as far as the clickiness. The button here to press. Now, funny enough, this button here for the reset on the original console like I have. This is the base of the Gen 1 model of the Genesis, by the way. This right here wasn't clicky like that in the original model. And here, this, I'm guessing, again, there's no, like, actual... Uh, headphone jack in. I guess this is just here for show. But from what I can tell, we got USB ports. We have uh, HDMI out. We have the actual AC in. Uh, there's no headphone jack. I wish it did come with a headphone jack. That'd actually be kind of cool because this right here was the headphone jack on the original uh, console. And right here is also, yeah, it's just phones right there. You can probably see it's very light on the camera. But uh, that's where you put the headphone jack. But anyway, like I was saying, this butt reset button was clicky, wasn't clicky on the original one. It was actually just soft press that you could do that to actually reset your game. So that's the console itself. That's the actual console unit. Let's take a look at some of this other stuff. Okay, we got the HDMI cable. We got USB cables okay, for the charger as well as all, I'm pretty sure, for the controllers. Well, the controllers have their own uh, cables, which are based on USB here. You know, they're not the original inputs for the original controllers. But here you go. Original three button SNE, uh, was it uh, Sega Genesis controller based on the original launch model? Feels very good. Uh, again, this takes me back. Again, they, the controllers had this very like boomerang esque or crescent moon uh, design to it. Feels very similar to the original buttons, you know, as someone that grew up with that. Uh, obviously, there's some differences, but feels very good overall. AC adapter, of course. Uh, gonna open up the other controller just again, see if it's all good. Now, like I mentioned before, these controllers don't have the original input for the Sega Genesis, especially, you know, the Model 1 or any of the models of Sega Genesis. These all are based on USB, and you could probably plug these into your PC as well to use them. But one thing that is cool I can notice, probably a little hard to see on the camera, that has the little Sega little icon there, the Sega text, which on the original controllers that had the original Genesis input, that was the exact same thing. But instead of it being the long way like this up and down, it was actually to the side with the input. So again, same thing, feels very good overall. Uh, again, it's, this is pretty darn cool. This takes me really, really back. It just, it's surreal seeing something like this be a thing now in this day and age in 2019 to 2020, as opposed to back in the early 1990s. So can't wait 
to dive into this, mess around, probably play a few games on it just to test it out, which we're going to do here in this video. And I'm going to give you guys my overall thoughts and impressions. But there you go. That's all the stuff that comes with the Genesis Mini. As you guys can tell, this is a pretty much a small replica console living up to its Genesis Mini namesake. And it's based off the Model 1 Genesis, which is the model of the Genesis that I grew up with. And it's pretty cool. I would have loved to see maybe variations of this with the Genesis Mark II or the Mark III. I know some like hardcore faithful to the console would have loved to see something like that as like, you know, for collectible purposes. But basing it on the original model, the launch model, when this console first came to the United States or was first developed in Japan as the Mega Drive, this is actually pretty cool. For North America, it has the North American kind of decals on it, which I think is pretty dope. Pretty sure in other territories, you've got more of the Mega Drive decals and the Mega Drive like branding and such but for me this takes me way back this is something awesome it feels very surreal to see this console be kind of relevant in some fashion again now in this day and age compared to like you know the early to mid 90s so this is very cool for someone like me now besides marveling at the hardware let's actually check out some genesis games let's actually check out to see if the software really lives up to the namesake and the legacy of the sega genesis Okay, so speaking on all of these games here included with the Genesis Mini, it's a solid collection overall, but don't get me wrong, there's a couple that I would have switched out for far better choices that be included in this collection. But if we're just talking about the games that are here already, one of the things I can say about all of them is that it's very disappointing to see that there's no filter options for any of them. Granted, these are in the pixel perfect presentation for them, but I still would at least would have liked the option to have some sort of filters to smooth things out or at least adjust things when I can. Obviously, everybody's going to have a different TV, even though this is an HDMI out type of console. But even so, I feel like it would have been a lot better just to have some of those options just in case you can make things a little bit better. Now on to the games themselves, I am pretty happy to see classics like Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, obviously Ghouls and Ghosts, Altered Beast, Beyond Oasis, and many others included here. There's some pretty cool ones that I was very happy to see get some love, including Vector Man, Virtual Fighter 2, and a couple others. But obviously, like I mentioned before, there's a bunch of games on here I would have switched out for far better choices, including some of the games that I feel like a lot of the genres weren't really represented that much. There is an overabundance of platforming games on here, it feels like that's the majority of the library that's included with the Genesis Mini. And it's understandable because platformers were a big part of the 16-bit era of consoles, both on the Sega Genesis and on the Super Nintendo. However, there's a bunch of other games that were part of different genres that really made up the library of the Genesis console. They were a huge part of why the console was so popular compared to the Super Nintendo. The one that I feel like that suffers the most here is sports games. Sports games were a huge part of the Genesis library. They were a major, major part that differentiated the Genesis from the Super Nintendo. And the only real sports game we get here is a racing game, which is Road Rash 2. There's nothing inherently wrong with the game, it's pretty much exactly as you remember, but I would have loved to see some other sports games get some shine here, including maybe a football game, a baseball game, any sort of other game, including maybe a basketball game like NBA Jam or something. Something that would have at least, you know, put a little bit more spice into the library of games that's included with the Genesis Mini. It feels like that's the only game representing that particular genre, and it feels like, you know, there was probably some licensing issues or anything else that really prevented them from getting other games that were huge hits with the Genesis. The same could also be said for the fighting game genre, even though we already have games like Street Fighter and Virtual Fighter 2 included here. But where is Mortal Kombat? That feels like that's a huge omission from the Genesis library, especially with it being such a big hit compared to the Super Nintendo version. That's history right there that's being completely overlooked. And again, there's many other examples in here I feel like of games that should have been included and kind of substituted with some of the other games they decided to put in here. I should also mention that besides the main games that we have here, there are two bonus games that were never released here in the United States or never came to the Genesis console proper. That includes Darius and Tetris. There's pretty interesting to include in here, however, they're not really the main reason why you're going to want to pick up this console, and I don't feel like they add a lot of value to the total package. Most of the people that are going to be picking up the Genesis Mini are going to be playing it for the nostalgia reasons, not necessarily because there was an unreleased game on here. And the funny thing is, these unreleased games aren't all that great. I mean, I understand that there's some history to these, especially with Tetris being on every single platform, and especially with the Genesis version that got made for us, but just never came out. However, it's not really something that I really spent a lot of time with, or I feel like anybody's really going to spend a lot of time with in general. If you're one of those people that's picking up the console for nostalgia reasons, you're going to be spending a lot of time with the games that you really remember, including games like Ghouls and Ghosts, Altered Beasts, Street Fighter, Sonic 1 and 2, uh, Streets of Rage 2, Virtual Fighter, Vector Man, there's a whole bunch of other games, Castlevania Bloodline, 
Bloodlines, Comic Zone, Contra Hard Corps, those are the games you're really going to want to play this console for, especially with that authentic feel. One final nitpick I do want to mention to you guys is that the console comes with two controllers that are the three button layout for the original Genesis controllers, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, with the inclusion of Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, I feel like there should have been a six button controller included here. The other thing is, too, is that I use one of the retro bit six button controllers for the Genesis Mini in order to kind of test out my experience, and I feel like that's the better option to go with besides the ones that are included with the console. If you're able to pick up some of those controllers, or at least one of them, you'll have a far better experience. It's not as bad playing Street Fighter 2 with just the three button layout, all you have to do is just hit the start button to switch between punches and kicks, however it just feels so much more better and much more natural to have the six buttons available to you right from the start. Not all the games on here use that six button layout, so it kind of makes sense to just go with the three button, but still, if you really want a lot of like what was really authentic to that era, I feel like having one three button and maybe one six button controller would have been much more of a better option. As a full disclosure, like some of you know, I was in the My Sega Story commercial for the Sega Genesis Mini. I actually contributed a little bit to some of that stuff, like many other people did. So Sega put like a compilation of everybody's reactions and stories together. So that was pretty cool. But pretty much I wanted to throw that out there for you guys, you know, to take what I say with a grain of salt if that's what matters to you. Sega. 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 So there you go guys, those are my overall thoughts about the Sega Genesis Mini. I think it's kind of cool, I think it's interesting for someone like me who has, you know, pretty much a strong nostalgic connection to the Sega Genesis from my memories of my childhood back then. But even if you're someone that isn't really a big Genesis fan, if you probably didn't grow up with the console, this is like a neat little kind of a collectible or something a little bit of like a luxury to have, especially if you're into classic or retro games. But overall, those are my thoughts about the Genesis Mini. Let me know what you guys think about it down below in the comments section. Tell me, did you grow up with the Sega Genesis? Are you fascinated by the Genesis like library of games? Are you a big Super Nintendo fan and pretty much Genesis doesn't do what Nintendo does or whatever you want to say out there? Put all that stuff down below in the comments section. Thanks for watching this video everyone. Make sure you guys check out some of these other videos in the boxes after the credits and don't forget to visit my Patreon page via the annotations for more exclusive content. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Peace out and stay epic everybody.